I'm giving away a free guided fishing trip on Deep Creek Lake Reservoir in Maryland with Fish Pimp Bass Fishing Guide Services. To enter the contest, all you have to do is become a Patreon member. The winner will be announced October 16th during that Monday Night Live. Again, all you have to do, sign up for my Patreon, link down below, and you're automatically entered for a chance to win the guide fishing trip. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And today we have a really special guest. I have a, a guy that I actually met through Antietam Bassmasters. And, and we'll get into that story here in a minute. But Dave, you know, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. Not a problem. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Thomas. When Appreciate I it. when I finally uh, when I made the move out of Northern Virginia into the Hagerstown area, I was really I was a little depressed for a while because I thought like I have a fiberglass boat. There's no water around me. I could fish, and there's no clubs. And <laughs> when I found you guys, it was like this breath of hope that there's something around us. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know the two areas mainly with the glass boats are you know four locks and and big slack water. You know you got five six miles worth of water that you could fish without worrying about running into rocks with your glass boat. Now, B Big Slack is an amazing resource that, that we have here. And I, and I really, I, I'm going to be honest with you, until I moved up here, I really didn't know too much about either one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of the best kept secret, I guess. I, I mean, for, for us, you know, we, as a club, we've been fishing it here the last we, we, we shied away from them for some reason. Guys just didn't, you know, think it was, it was viable, but the last three or four years we've been fishing it. And I mean, having, you know, 12, 13 pound bags coming out of there, which is, you know, for that area is a, it's mm. pretty good fishing. You know, yeah. you know that yourself. Yeah. Fishing I mean, Thursday night tournament, you won one of them. It's, yeah. and then, well, actually you guys won one of them too. Actually, I think you're at four locks, right? Uh, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Dave Miller won, uh, last, uh, it wasn't, it was, wasn't this past Thursday is the one before that. At four that yeah. one, that place is weird because you look at four locks <laughs> and big slack and you would think they both fish the exact same and they don't yeah. at all. It's no. crazy. No, no, that's, it's very true. That's very, you know, the four locks, um, if you can have a jet boat, a lot of the guys go up into the shallow water up above uh, McCoy's Ferry and, you know, and, and fish there. But it's been abnormally low here the last, you know, uh, two, three months or so, right? And so only the people that really know how to get through those rapids up there, you know, have been going up there. But those some of those guys on those Thursday night tournaments are winning it when they go up there. Um, but... You know, I, I found if you can find rocks and grass mixture there at four locks um, with, the, you know, a little shallow shelf and then drops into the deeper water, that's that's where they are. What was shocking to me is looking at some of the bags coming out of four locks compared to big slack is the number of largemouth in four locks. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. would have lost a bet if you told me there'd be so many <laughs> green ones coming out of that stretch. But it, it's surprising. Yeah, we. We had two in that in that tournament. We had two, you know, the three three point five two was our lunker. That was the lunker of the tournament, and and we had another one that was, you know, about that same size. Um, you know, it was uh, that was kind of a funny story on that one. On that second one, um, I hooked up on it in in the in the grass. I had six pound test line on. You know, I was throwing a little cinco, and it went right down into the grass. I mean, just buried deep into the grass. Like, oh no, now we're at, I can't force this thing out with six pound test line, right? So I so I just kept the pressure on him a little bit and I, I let off on it just enough, just to let it try and swim. And sure enough, it swam out of the grass. Like, all right, we got it. Oh no, it turned around and went right back on the other side into another patch of grass and just stayed there. I mean, I had five minutes, you know, just going, well, what do I do? I'm not, I can't horse it out with six pound test. So I had my buddy there, Dave Miller. I said, look, get the net, follow my line down, straight down. We're only in like, you know, three, four feet of water. So follow it down there and let, let's see what happens. You know, so he did it one time and, and he was a little bit too far back. 
and did it one more time, went straight down my line. And sure enough, that as soon as the bass felt that net near it, it went straight into the net. It come out of the grass and went boom, right into the net. It's like, all right, thank you, Lord. You know, that was cool. Dude. So we, dude. we got that, that one in. That was, that was neat. That's freaking awesome. With, with four locks and big slack, what has to be done, you think, to get the weights up a little bit? Because I, I enjoy it. I love it a lot. But then it's funny. My friends rag on me when I show them some of the smallmouth. It's like, what was your kicker smallmouth? And it's like, it was two and a half pounds, three pounds. And they're like, dude, yeah. come on. That's a minnow up in the Susky. But it's like, it's better yeah. than it was. But what do you think has to be done to, to get it over the, the hump? A, a lot. A lot. It's a lot better than it was. I mean, years, 10, 15 years ago, you know, you, you, it, 50 fish day was, was nothing. The last five years has just been bad. It's just, you know, I, I went to a, a seminar with the biologist that is, actually works that area. He works, he works from um, Seneca all the way, all the way up to Hancock. And um, he, he said it was the, the high water storms that came through 2017, 2018, that, the bass were not able to spawn. I mm. mean, they spawned and then they just got washed away. The water was so high. So there really wasn't any, you know, replenishment of, of anybody or of any, any fish there for at least two years. So Maryland started a stocking program. And this is a kind of a, a good story and a bad story, you know, in itself, but they, they had a tournament um, early in the season to catch uh, the female smallmouth, the, the big ones. And they got a bunch of them. They, there was, I think it was close to 20 pounds um, stringer that, that, that came in or a 20 pound um, bag of bass that the guys brought in um, out of uh, Hancock mm -hmm. early February, right? So they, they got those breeding fish and put them in, in tanks and stuff. And they had to go down to somewhere in Southern Maryland. They, they couldn't use the, the um, uh, breeding stuff that they have up here, you know, the, the hatcheries that they have up here for some reason. They, they couldn't, I guess they're more geared towards trout than they are for smallmouth. And so they transported them down there during the transport they're live. The, the aerators broke mm. and they lost them. They lost a whole, you know, the whole, whole lot of them. This was the first time they, they tried to do it. I think it was in 2018, 20, 28, 2018, 2019. So they did it again the next year and it worked. They brought them down there. They got, they got the, you know, a bunch of, of smaller fish. They got them to breed and, and they put them back right back in, in where where they were caught they they spread them out a little further but they put them in in four locks they put them in big slack water and you know all the way out through through the river they also bought because because they lost that 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 first year they tried to do it they went and bought uh, i think the guy said they were like six you know five to six inch uh fingerling um smallmouth that they bought and put them in in the potomac as well so that's probably the ones that we're seeing here now a couple years two three years later that are you know keeper size fish now because you could only you know it was the last five years man you would just catch the little ones you couldn't catch anything any big ones yeah so, we had uh john mulligan on the show which is the maryland fishery manager and he talked about that program yeah. i think it was episode 60 guys of the podcast you want to go back and yeah. i think they said they've stocked up to 80,000 fingerling smallmouth since the beginning of the program till now. Yeah. So yeah. it's something, you know? Yeah. It's something. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's like you said, the largemouth are there in four locks. They're there. I, I mean, I've caught them years ago. This year we're finally catching them again. And you can see there's, there's one little area that I go to all the time and it's loaded with 10, 11 inch largemouth. This one little area is it, just loaded with them. I mean, you, you'll you know you'll catch them, um, but they they've all been small. Just this year, I went up there uh, to to this little spot, and I was seeing the big the big you know 
three, four pound largemouth swimming around in there with them. Hmm. So, it's, so it's like, all right, man, they're, we're going to, they're coming back. You know, so that place got a lot of grass too. Like it's a ton of grass. It, it, it does. But because it's so deep, you know, it's deeper there. Um, it, 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 it's, it's better for the largemouth actually. They like that grass. And, and, you know, guys, we're not just going to talk about four locks. We're also talk about big slack here because I think it was, you know, it was in August, Saturday in August. We had our, we had an eight hour tournament on big slack. I don't know if you were there for that one, um, yeah. but somebody brought in like a four and a half, five pound largemouth out of big slack. It was yeah. a tank and it was like, where the hell did you come from, dude? Because <laughs> they're so rare there as well. But the yeah. one thing I've seen, and I th- maybe you've seen this too when you fish big slack, there's a lot of fish that are 11 and a half inches right now, which is a good sign that yes. if they can hang in there another year or two, that's a lot of keepers we should have. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think next year is going to next, next two years, we're going to, we're going to have some really good, good bags coming in there. Cause they said the biologist was saying that they grow like four to five inches a, a year, you know, once they, once they get out of that fingerling state. So, Hey, yeah, I think we're going to have some really good, good fish coming out of them, both areas. Now, now let, let, let's actually go a little bit more wide approach here. What kind of got you into fishing and have you always been in this area? Uh, I, I actually grew up in Rockville, Maryland. Oh, wow. Um, so, uh, and you know, me and my, my brother used to just go down to the, to the Creek rock Creek and fish for, you know, at that time there was trout, there was suckers, there was, you know, catfish, eels, you know, all kinds of stuff. So ever since I was a little kid, I, I've always been, been fishing. Um, it wasn't until I moved to, uh, and, and you know, I, I had a small boat. Um, when I lived in, in Rockville and, you know, fish some of the, I guess they were, what was the fraternal order of police had, had some tournaments going on that. And I used to fish the old, um, well, it was the red man back then. That was the BF, the BFL mm-hmm. snap is called the red man. So I, I fished a, you know, I fished a few of those as well. Then I moved to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, uh, back in 92. Um, and I joined a club there, um, and that's where I really started, you know, getting into the more club fishing and fishing more tournaments to try to make the state team and all that kind of stuff. So from there, you know, I moved, moved back here, here, uh, Hager Sound in 98 and, um, went into a club called Westmar. Hmm. It was my buddy, Randy Bottomley was, was the president there. He was my best man of my wedding. So, you know, I had to, had to join his club. Right. So, um, from there, everybody just got too old and everybody <laughs> was kind of retired and, and the club just kind of disbanded. And, and, um, so me and Jerry Brown, um, moved over here to, to, uh, to Antietam. I think it was 2017. I'm looking at their first place, uh, championship on deep Creek Lake. <laughs> trophy here said that, that was the first year we, we joined Antietam. And Antietam's a great club. And for you guys that you don't, that don't know, um, it's, they're doing now the catchway release format, which was one of the things that really lured me to it because you see it on TV and the novelty of trying it. And honestly, I, I really like the format. I'm not going to lie. It, it's, it's a, yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun. I like that. You can, you, first off, you're already weighing your fish. So you know what you have. Um, right you check with your partner. So that's kind of the honor system. There's your co-angler, or I guess the person you're competing against, you guys check to make sure you all agree on the weight. Haven't had an issue with that at all, but yeah. it allows you to go places that you probably wouldn't be allowed to go depending on the state's uh, limit situation. Yeah. Yeah. So we're able to fish early in the year because we don't keep them, you know, because, you know, Maryland after March 15th, you know, you're not supposed to keep any freshwater at least, right. Any, anything, at all um you can you can catch uh, over 15 inch inch fish on tidal water but you, you can't in the fresh water you're, you're not allowed to so it allows us to do that because we know it's catch measure weight release right there right there in spot so and and what also keeps it honest is you you can never fish with the same uh co-angler you can only do it twice a year um mm. you know so you're the co-angler is checking on you to make sure that your fish is over 12 inches, you know, and, and, and then you can weigh them. So 
Yeah, it's a really good system. It, and it, it's, you know, it helps, helps the fish. It helps us. It can keep everybody honest. And yeah, I like it as well. You, you mentioned Deep Creek and I know everyone, this is the, the, the main entree of the night, really talking about the Deep Creek. This is an interesting lake. It is, and I know people are going to kill me in the comment section, what's the largest lake in Maryland? I mean, you have a bunch of private lakes in Baltimore, which I don't count. If it's private, it doesn't really count. So let's say Deep, Deep Creek is is the biggest impoundment, but it's there's, yep. there's yep. not a lot known about it, which is crazy. There's not as many fishing reports and information like on the Potomac or the Shenandoah River, places like that. Yeah, yeah, there there isn't. Um, you know, it's there used to be Penrod used to have guides up there, and he used to run reports there, but not he not anymore. There they're not. So it's that's Maryland's best kept secret too, man. I mean, there's some nice largemouth in there too. I mean, I I had a guide service, or I you know I, I took some people out on on a, on a guide service out there. Um, three weeks ago. And, you know, I was trying to not catch fish and let them catch it. There was, there was, you know, two guys and me in, in the boat, you know, and, and I was trying to, you know, show them, well, you just get this thing going, wacky rig it. And, you know, you just take it and just get it up there close to, to the dock, preferably under the dock, if you can, do, if you can do it. And so I was showing them what to do. And, uh-oh, <laughs> Oh, but you know, a three eleven, three pound eleven ounce small uh, large mouth come come jumping out. It's like, oh man, all right. So, you know, so there's last year there was um, two guys that had bass over seven pounds there, large mouth. One one guy's I think was was almost eight pounds, and the other guy was, was seven ten or something like that. So. I mean, there's there's some giants in there, and and smallmouth as well. There's big big smallmouth in there too. You know, it, it's it's really a beautiful lake, man. It, it's it, you know, if you're a walleye fisherman, walleye all over the place. You know, if you're in into, um, you know, just catching fun fish. You know, the pickerel and stuff like that. You go almost can't keep those off off your baits. You know, when you're bass fishing. Um, Sunnies, man, I got I a picture of a sunfish. I mean, that dude was, it was bigger than my hand. I mean, it was, it, it was huge. That's so freaking cool. Yeah. And, and what's so crazy about that lake is, I mean, in Hagerstown, I'm going to say two and a half hour drive, you think? Roughly. Give two or hours. Take. You, can get there, you can get there in two. But the yeah, weather and topography, when it's oh. like, it snows in June there, and it's not that far <laughs> from us. It's crazy yeah. how short the seasons are there, like the summer season is. Yeah. It's true. And I, I'm stating that with, with the next question where we're here in late September going into October. And if you're on the tidal Potomac, that's one thing. But at Deep Creek, the season's coming fast, the fall feedback. Would you say we're in the fall season now at Deep Creek or we have a couple weeks to go? I would think we got a couple of weeks to go, um, but it's there. And this is the time. I mean, we we normally, the, the Maryland Bass Federation always fishes it late. September, October, um, because they just, they, they put the feedback on, man, they know there's going to be ice over their head and they're, they're eating, you know, they, they're really feeding this time, this time of year. So I've taken a second and a, and a third there. I haven't won one yet. Oof. Um, so, so I gotta, I gotta do that this, you know, in a couple of weeks here on the 30th, I'd, I'd like to take a win up there for the Bass, Maryland Bass Federation. I've won. What are, term. what are the winning weights generally speaking for Maryland bass up there? They, it's been steadily going up. I mean, it, it's, it's normally if you caught 10 pounds, you were in the top, top five, easy, easy. If you had 10 pounds now, it, you might make a top 10 with 10 pounds because of large mouth are, are, are they're really catching them now. You know, they're getting some big large mouth, which that's what helps you. I mean, you, you catch a limit of smallmouth and you get a five pound large mouth to go with it, you know, 15 pounds, you're, you know, you, you're in it. It has to be that, that subaquatic vegetation, that grass that's in there. Um, at least last fall when I was there, it, it's gotta be it, a big help. It's, it's actually too much. There's actually too much grass in there. It, I've never seen that much. 
as much grass as I have this year. Oh, wow. It is like every single cove you go into, there's grass everywhere, all the way up to, you know, eight, 10 feet of water. They, it's, nice. it's got a, there's weird grass in there. It's, I, I don't know exactly what you call it, but I call it like, you know, cabbage grass or, you know, it's, it's a real tall, big leaves on it and stuff. And, and that stuff is everywhere. Um, you know, the key there is to find the mixture because there's, there's hydrilla, there's, there's that cabbage grass, and then you'll also see the, the eel grass in there as well. Well, so if you can find an area that has a mixture of that, that's the ticket there, especially on top of water. Now, I was going to say, like, huge shout out to Matt Sell, who's the DWR guy from him that runs that place where they didn't go the route of like Raystown Reservoir and PA and just pesticide the whole thing. They right. they did try to keep some mm-hmm. in there. Granted, you know, there is an argument to be made whether it's too much, but I personally, from management, it's better to have too much than not enough. Because next year, in the next two years, I think you're going to start seeing more 20 pound bags coming out of there with how much vegetation there is. Oh yeah. You know, I agree. I agree. Yeah. You know, the, the smallmouth, you'll find them in that grass too. They, they hmm. really like the rocks better, but you'll definitely find them, you know, in, in areas that have the mixture of, of the grass and, and rocks. Um, and as you know, it's, you know, deeper there too. So. Deep Creek is a very unique shaped lake and you have this crazy bottleneck right there dead center yeah being only 3900 acres do you try to cover the whole thing in the fall or do you specifically just target one end or the other what what i do is is i try and go up towards the dam area in the mornings I, i find deep creek is a from from 9 30 10 o'clock on it's a different different bite totally different bite they get up under the docks you know if you got some some shade you know they get under the docks if you try and hit those docks early in the morning you usually don't catch them so i'll go up lake in, the, in you know towards the dam uh, i'll go there try and get a limit a small mouth and then you know by 9 30 i'm i'm back down the other end you know, fish, fishing, mainly docks or points, you know, points. Um, this year, like I said, I've never seen as much grass in there. So if you, you know, if you can find a, a dock that has eight, 10 feet of water in front of it and there's grass all around it, that's where the large mouth are. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, that thing with the grass and that's what's so frustrating to a lot of anglers is you have to come through it. Like you have to just fish through it, especially that submerged stuff. There's no, there's no secret sauce besides doing that. No, no. And it's, you know, like I said, if you can find that area with the three grasses and get a good top water bite going, um, that could be phenomenal. If you, if you get that going in the morning, sometimes it'll last all day long. You can throw a buzz bait all day long. If, if you got a little bit of overcast and you got some of that grass there and, and just catch them on a, on a top water all day. Especially this this upcoming time of year, man. That they, they really get on the. What's your favorite top. Uh, type of topwater bait this time of year for vegetation? Because I would think it's a buzz bait or a whopper plopper. What, what do you tend to fall in? Uh, you know, it, it again, it depends on, on where, but um, yeah, the buzz bait seems to be better o- over that. That or even just slow down if they're not hitting that fast thing, just a just a, a pop bar, you know. Um, Pop our right over that grass and slow down a little bit, and 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 you'll get bit. But the buzz bait seems to be better over the grass, of course. What temperatures are you seeing right now? Or a better question is, what temperatures do you want to see for this time of year that you think they're going to go full feed bag? Well, it's starting to get down now. I mean, I just looked at the, at the uh, the temperatures now, and it's around seventy degrees. So once it gets down about sixty two, there, it's on. Wow. They're, gonna, they're gonna start eating. Yeah. Does that place fish big, or is it fish tight like Matawoman Creek, so to speak? When, when you hit this tournament, because it's only thirty nine hundred acres. Yeah, it's not, but it does fish big. It, it, I just find it's a run and gun lake to me. It's you can you, you rarely or I rarely catch more than two fish off of a dock or one area. Um, you know, unless they're on the feed bag in the morning on that top water stuff, you'll 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 crush them, but. Generally, I'll catch one or two fish on a dock and then I'll go somewhere else. I'll go to another dock somewhere. 
or work a different code, you know, it's just, it's more of a running, all the guys winning it, they're running and gunning. They're not sticking at one area that you can go back to the same areas. And I do that often as well. You know, if I'll, I'll catch one or two fish off a dock, leave it, go fish some other area, come back again, two, three hours later, and they kind of regroup again back on, under the docks and, and uh, you'll catch them again. But it, that's just for me, that that's how you fish that lake. It's, you don't just sit on a hole. When you mention those docks, and this is, I think, funny for Maryland Eggers, because we think docks, we think the, the tidal Potomac, where it's nice on low tide because you got like 10 feet of clearance, uh, nice big yeah. posts. <laughs> Cl- Deep yeah. Creek is not, there. not those docks. Like it, It's no, almost like off. Lake Champlain or like one of those northern places. Yeah, they're all floating docks. I mean, you, you know, think about it. I mean, it freezes, right? The whole lake freezes. You know, that's why there's, there's ice fishing and stuff going on there um, a lot. Um, so th- those docks, they pull them. And that, and that that's happens. Um, there was a tournament in o- late October that several years ago where it was a two-day tournament. Um, I was catching fish on, on the docks um, over there by the ski area the first day. I went back the second day, and the docks were gone. <laughs> they pulled them. It's like, oh, no. Dagger. <laughs> this, this, this whole row, man, here is where I was catching them. But, and they were gone. It's like, oh, well, got to go find something else. You know, so that, that's, that, that's just how that is. So you got to learn how to skip. You know, like you said, that the area you got got to learn how to, how to be a good skipper. And, and uh, I got to tell you, skipping the baits kind of turns the, especially a smallmouth. You know, if you just cast in there and you know try and be nice and quiet and stuff, and you know your bait floating down, you, you know you'll you'll get bit. But if you can skip it and have it skip all the way up under the dock as it's skipping, they think it's a fleeing bait fish. Hmm. You know. And they and smallmouth and largemouth are obviously predators, and they they go after it. So skipping is is the technique there, all year long, really. How do they generally speaking set up on those docks? Because those are some shallow floating docks, and I think if you aren't accustomed to that type, you might think there's no way a fish could be under this dock. It's too shallow, and yeah. not true at all. No, not at all. You got you, you know it. it you have to figure them out. You have to figure out what what pattern they're on that day, that that day that that, that you're there. Because, I mean, the last it was funny that again here, I I took a, another group of, of people out, um, and in the mornings we were catching them on the front of the docks, and we were catching largemouth on the front of the docks. But you I, I, you can make the call. I say, okay, let's go to the back in here a little bit further, a little bit more shallow docks, and now let's go to the back of the docks, all smallmouth. It was like, it was the, that was the pattern of the day. Hmm. You, you know, the, and it, just like you said, you couldn't get it shallow enough. I mean, it was where, where the pier, you know, goes, goes to the floating dock, right where it touched the water, or right up under that, where, where the water was underneath that pier. I mean, two, three inches or four inches of water, man. They were there. <laughs> just they, they were, you know, they're like ghosts. You, you just uh, just got to have confidence that you, once you catch one in the back like that, well, okay, that's where they are. So, you know, fish, fish the back of other docks when you get to them. That's just, that's so much fun. That's like my type of fishing. It's Yeah, yeah. But there'll be other days that they won't be there. They'll be all on the front of the docks, you know. So it, it's, you just got to. Figure it out. You got to figure it out pretty quick, um, you know, where they are. And they, and then they generally stick with that. Every cove you go to is going to be the same thing. And that's a great little segue to what made you start a guide service? Is this something you've always wanted to do? Is it like, how, how'd that happen? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, yeah, I always wanted, wanted to do it because I like teaching people. I like teaching people how to fish. Right. So I figure, Hey, I'm, I'm 66 years old, you know, I'm going to share my knowledge with other people. What a better way to do that than to try and do a guide service. I'm not doing it to make a whole lot of money. I mean, if you 
go to my website and look, I'm, I'm the cheapest guy around. And I tell you, you know, my, my prices are cheaper than anybody. And I'm doing it just, just because I'm just getting started. I just started doing it, um, in February. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love fishing. And I love to teach people how to fish. Um, I had, uh, I had some, it wasn't the last one, the one before last there, there, I took some people out that live up there at Deep Creek Lake. And, uh, the one guy has, a, has a house back there and he had two kids, two 13 year olds, swimmer, swimming champions. If you go to my website, you'll see, you'll see pictures of them. But, um, you know, generally I, I don't like to take more than, you know, me, me and two people, three, three people on the boat. Well, it was him and his two sons and me. There was, you know, four people on, on, on the ranger, but it was fine. I mean, mm-hmm. it really worked out well there because it's so kind of open there. You're not tucking into the docks. You can get in areas where there's enough room for guy in the back of the boat fishing to this dock and guy in the front's fishing to this dock. And, and they're both of them, you're catching fish almost at the same time. So. It worked out really well. I thought that was the most interesting thing when I was looking at your website was the places you go. And this is, to me, guys, this is what's so cool is you're talking the Deep Creek Lake, Upper Potomac, Big Slack area. Then we go Rocky Gap, Little Seneca. That's yep. really Cunningham Falls. Like these are really cool out of the, out of the part, like Greenbrier. Like that's really neat. Yeah, you know, the very first one, I, I got my cards out, you know, and and, and uh, I had called Cunningham Falls and asked them, I said, look, is it okay, you know, if, if I put a couple of my cards there by your signs and by the boat ramp? And the guy told me, yeah. He said, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You know, you're, you're licensed with the state, go ahead. So I did, and the very first call I got was from a guy. He said, that is the coolest name I've ever seen for a bass fishing guy, sir. Dave the Fish Pimp, man. He said, that is that is really neat, you know. So, uh, you know, we, we linked up, went 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 out in, I think it was late March, April, and he didn't catch a thing. It's like, oh, no. I was catching them, you know, here, here and there, but he didn't catch anything. So I said, look, it's 12 o'clock. I know you're only paying for a half a day, but we're getting in the boat and we're going to Greenbrier. You're going to catch something at Greenbrier, right? So we, we did. We went, we went, you know, it's a 20 minute drive. That's so, <laughs> so cool. we went over to Greenbrier and he didn't catch any again at oh, Greenbrier. No. Like, oh man, no way. So, so <laughs> I, uh, I, again, I was catching them. I showed him what to do. He did, he just, I mean, it just wasn't his day. Right. So I said, look, man, I owe you one, you know, I, I'm not even going to take your money on this trip man. I owe you one, you know? So we went, it was probably a month or so later, we went back there to Greenbrier and I was showing him how to use a drop shot. So this drop shot's the ticket here, man. both those, both those cutting in falls and, and Greenbrier drop shot is, is the ticket. So we're in the shallow water. Have you ever been, had your boat or been in? I fish from the shore there, but yeah, yeah. Okay. So you know how, where the boat ramp is, it's real shallow. Mm -hmm. So we get out there, I pull a drop shot out. We're in the shallow area, grassy water, water there. And I said, here, here you, you know, you drop the drop shot out. It was clear enough and you know, where you could see it. And I said, you just drop it out there like that. Let the weight hit the bottom. And I said, we were watching it, right? I said, now, just shake it, you know? So he did that, put it in the water, went down there, and, and I said, see how it is? And you, you shake it. He shook it, and boom, a big old largemouth come out and nailed that thing right that's there. That's freaking. The spot. It was oh. like, oh, man, that's, that is so cool. He goes, oh, I can't believe it, man. And we, we had a great day. He caught like 17 that day, you know? So, awesome. You know, it was once, once you know, we got – got into him or he got his mojo back there, you know, hit, we had a really good day. But that was so funny, man. It was like, he goes, wow, it does work. <laughs> How did you even, th- that is such a, first off, fantastic name for a guide service. That's fantastic. Um, but second, yeah. what made you think like, you know what, let's go to some of these cool little places. Like what, you know, just because it's, it was close, you know, obviously it's close for me and no, who got, nobody guides there. Mm-hmm. You know, and you always see people at at the you know at the at the boat ramps fishing around the boat ramps and stuff, or at, at the uh, 
uh, at Cunningham Falls, I got a little area there with, you know, a little dock there that people can fish on. So I said, well, you know, hundred bucks for half a day. Then they're rendering those pedal boats over there. I don't know how much they, they cost, but you know, I, there's gotta be people. Mm-hmm. I, I really haven't had that. I haven't had people calling me though. I, I mean, it was that one guy. Um, I took a neighbor down the street uh, to Cunningham Falls um and that's it for those those lakes you know i don't i don't know why i mean it's cheap enough i mean a hundred bucks for a half a day fishing is is i I thought it's pretty reasonable but i don't think it's the price i i don't i'm probably i'm hoping this video that we're making (laughs) is gonna is gonna help promote things here it's not necessarily because if you said it was a 50 bucks for the tidal potomac I mean, you just, you'd be completely, you'd be set because it's the water almost, I feel like, not the price. Um, yeah, could be. Because if, be. if yeah. you're on Lake Okeechobee or, or something like that, yeah. one of those big vaunted true. areas. True, but, true. But with that said, I've heard some things about Rocky Gap that there are some monsters in there or used to be oh. monsters in there. Oh, there, there, there still are. There still are. Um, y- yeah, we, we fished. Uh, in our club, we fished a night tournament there several years ago, two, three years ago. And, and I was in the back of the boat. Uh, Pint Klein was, was the boater there, right? And I won that win too, on a drop shot because he wasn't, he wouldn't throw a drop shot, you know? And, and it was like, yeah, is this, this is, this is the ticket in these grassy, you know, small lakes is they, you know, they, the, the bait fish are up off the bottom. It seems like, and the drop shot is, is, is the way to go. Out of all the lakes that you, you guide on, and let's just take out, uh, the tidal Potomac and Lake Anna. What is the biggest hidden gem you think that you go to? Oh, Deep Creek is, is my, is my favorite. Uh, and, and it is, it, it's one of Maryland's best fishing lakes around, man. Um, uh, I, Cunningham Falls is, is coming around here too, man. I mean, there's they're catching. I, I talked to a guy there who said his church had a little small club tournament there, and a kid caught an eight pounder at oh, a Cunningham Falls. No way. I, I believe it because I saw them. I saw them this year spawning on on beds, and they're monsters. I mean, they're monsters, man. Of course, I couldn't get ever hit anything, but. <laughs> But yeah, there are some big ones in Cunningham Falls and and Greenbrier for that matter. There, there are some big ones in, in in there as well. It's it's just not as many. I, th- I think uh, it says trout eaters. Will, it says trout eaters. I think is what it is. They stock so many trout in those two places. Oh yeah, they're eating those big ones. Are eating those trout? I guarantee you. You know, so they're getting just getting bigger and bigger. To um, to be yeah. fair, I didn't know you could even put a boat in at Cunningham. Greenbrier, I you saw the ramp. Yeah. I was like, it's kind of sketchy this ramp, but I think you can make it work. But I never knew that about Cunningham. Oh, Cunningham's much better. It's, it, it, it the ramp is better. Um, it's not you know in the shallows. You don't have to wade your you know you know wade through the weeds to get out to where, where the fishing is. And Cunningham's is actually a little bit bigger, more fishing area there too, um, and. This time of year and before um, Memorial Day, they have the, um, the they block off the area where the swim area is there at Cunningham Falls, so you can't fish back there. But after after Labor Day and before Memorial Day, they take those out and they let you fish back there. And man, in the spring, that's where they are. Man, they're on that sand. I mean, what a perfect place to spawn, right? Yeah. It, they're they're all over there. So the dam area and that in the where the swim area is early in the year, man, there there's some big, big bass in there. Guys, I mean, that's link in the episode description to uh and you said your name is uh is, is I wanna make sure because do you guys know I'm so good at, at doing the name, so I'll pull <laughs> this up right here now. So Dave, the pimp, the fish pimp bass fishing guide service. Um, <laughs> link in the episode yeah. description to his website and his phone number to uh, to get a chance. And then yep, card right there. And if you want to flip it around for the QR code as well. Yeah, I don't go hang on this one. Where's the QR code? Oh, where I went 
get too far. I'm going, but I got, I got another screen up above me. That's why I keep looking up because I'm looking at my screen above my picture. Perfect. Nope. That is perfect. And that'll be all cleaned up in post-production. So guys, yeah. again, you know, try to, try to support, uh, all, I try to support all the guides on this show. It's so important to not only this community when it comes to knowledge base, but really giving back to the guys that help help keep these fisheries going. I mean, they are the first responders when there's an issue on the water as well. If you look at what happened on the Shenandoah River, it was fishing guides that were there first and said like, hey, there's a problem here. We need to fix this. So, you know, yep. please give them, please give them your service and help them out. Uh, Dave, do you, what, what do you have coming up on your schedule? You mentioned you had a couple of tournaments, correct? Yeah, we got two, you know, we got a club tournament uh, that you know about there on Deep Creek um, uh, this Saturday, this coming Saturday. Um, and, uh, then the following Saturday is a Maryland Bass Federation tournament there. Interesting thing that just popped into my head. We talked about the ramp. It, do you think they're going to do yeah. anything to fix up the four lock ramp? Is that on the docket for the state to do? They are, they are. Okay. I, I was down there when, um, uh, there was some people doing surveys. It was, a, a, you know, the DNR or whoever works it to see that that's part of the, you know, the CNO canal there. So. You know, I'm sure they're getting federal money to, to do this as well. But they were doing the surveys to redo the whole ramp there at Four Locks. Because, as you know, I mean, it just drops off. When it's low like that, It, I mean, your your trailer could get stuck, you know, at the, at the end. Especially one like yours with the dual axle trailer, man. You could get stuck. I have to go out. I have to have my, my partner, it's, it's Kirk Cole. I have to have him back me up and I have to walk out in the water and stand at the very edge to make sure we don't go over that thing or yeah, we're, we're screwed. Yeah. Er, er, earlier in the year when we had, we had, um, when, when was it? Was it, was it this year or last? Um, trying to look at my the schedule. I think it was last year. I took some big plastic posts and went out there before everybody got there and pounded them in the, in the ground oh, on, on the side. So guys wouldn't, it's, don't get to, you know, your back wheels past these posts because you, you, you could get stuck. You're so, done. <laughs> You're not yeah. getting out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah, they are going to do it. They, they're saying they're going to redo that ramp and put a dock in there, put a, put a, you know, right now, you know, it's just pieces of concrete sitting there and it's just, you know, it's scary. Uh, so they said to, to the, if you look from the riverside, looking into the ramp on the right-hand side, they're going to put a big dock in there. You know, I guess kind of like they got at, at Big Slack one. Yeah, because that's the thing. I mean, I, I've been telling people for a while now, once I get this nonprofit up and running with the Patreon, that's the one thing that we're going to try to do is donate a bigger dock at Big Slack because that if you had a bigger dock in there, it would make life so much easier when you're taking off or just, you know, getting your bag filled and dumping fish. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, see the, the pro, not really problem, but big slack water is a recreational boater area there. And the, you, you almost don't go there on the weekends. You know, if you go, you go early in the morning mm -hmm. and get out there by 11 o'clock because in the summer, it's a nightmare. I mean, there's people bring those big wakeboard boats in there, man. And and it's just the parking lot is full, uh, you know, so I, they're, they're using that dock as well, you know, so. No, I a hundred percent agree. Well, yeah. You know. It's just because we have so few water that we can actually fish. That's where it's like, okay, we need to do something here to kind of alleviate the situation. And if it means, yeah, we got to put a new jock. Cause I mean, think about it. lock Raven. It's probably the biggest reservoir in Maryland, and it's about the same size, if not a little bit smaller than the public side of Lake Anna, just to give people context that are listening to this thing on, on Apple or, or Spotify. So that's a big reservoir, but it's completely private. So we don't have a lot of water that we can actually go take the boat out. And so when you get a place like a big slack, you just need to make sure you take care of it. And, and I know that yeah. wake boat boating thing with the erosion, I, I get they don't have a lot of water, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm torn on that. Yeah. Black Hills is, is a pretty, pretty big one too. Black Hills. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it goes back a lot further than you think, you know, there, there's uh and there's some giants in there as well. I think the biggest, biggest bass caught in our club, I think it was like an eight twelve, and it came out of there. Whew. It came out of Black Hills. I think Chris Arvin was telling me this. Did, did you guys have a tournament at little Seneca for Antietam? 
Well, yeah, that's where Black Hills is. Black Hills. Yeah. Okay, I was to make sure same place because that that place yeah, is yeah. amazing. Seneca Lake. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's the 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 second um, the the second guide service that that I took. A guy came down from Ohio and he was wanting to catch a muskie, and we were going to hit the river, you know, for for the muskie, but it was tremendously muddy and high. Blown out. It was out. really bad. So it's like. Look, man, I'm sorry. You know, he was down here for work and it was like, yeah, I mean, the next place I can think of to go is they do have muskie there at at, at uh, Black Hills. So we went there, uh, you know, I said, and, and this guy was throwing musky lures. I mean, he had these big, huge, I mean, huge freaking lures, man. It was cool. Uh, and he was throwing them things all day long, right? Don't you know? He goes, I got one. He's got, he he puts he puts on a a, a rattle trap like a, a one and a half two ounce rattle trap. And the thing was freaking like this, right? Wow. And he's throwing this thing around for a musket. He goes, Oh damn, I got something. He he brings that thing up, and it was a four pound eleven ounce largemouth. Man, it was. I oh mean, it was a God. beast. It was cool. I mean, that's on my website too. You'll you'll see a picture of that guy's name was Ryan. Hmm. And I mean, he, I said, man, I'm turning you into a bass fisherman now instead of this musky guy. Right. You know, but, uh, it was, it was a terrible day. The wind was blowing 20, 25 miles an hour. It's electric motor only Lake. You know, we're in, in the jet boat, you know, so it, it, it was blowing us all around and stuff, but you know, we still had a great day. It was cold as hell. <laughs> you know, I think the water temperature is like 42 degrees. But I caught a three and a half pounder, a two and a half pounder, and then he caught that four eleven. So, you know, we had we had a good day. That's freaking awesome, Dave. I can't thank you enough uh, for coming on this show. Thank you no so problem. much for just, just yeah, just for sharing your knowledge. And and guys, again, link in the episode description to everything that we talked about today. Our Patreon supporter of the week is actually Kurt Cole. Uh, huge shout out to Kerr for becoming a Patreon member. If it wasn't for you guys, this show wouldn't happen. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel or support us on Patreon. We'll see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.